America is the land of bright lights and broken dreams. A place that delights and inspires a hunger for fame. It's also a place that some people find hard to leave, even after death. My name's Gail Porter and I'm a skeptic. My name is Chris Fleming and I am a sensitive. It's my mission to investigate alleged sightings and hauntings of Hollywood ghosts. A sensitive can detect paranormal events beyond the range of the five senses. I wouldn't say I'm a non-believer, but I'm definitely a skeptic. Together, our mission is to investigate the dead famous. Our search for Grace Kelly will take us on a journey through the fairy tale of her life. From her humble beginnings in the theatres of Philadelphia. Okay, it's up here. To the eerie playgrounds of her adolescence. There's a lot of shadows. I don't like it. My hairs are standing on end right now. Would this mesmerizing princess choose to grace us with her presence? Oh, what was that? Was that you? We're having one thing after another here. and spun gold hair, Grace Kelly was one of the world's most flawless creations. Born into a powerful Philadelphia family, she was destined for greatness. But no one could have predicted that this Hollywood royalty would turn into a real-life princess. Grace Kelly was brought up here in this mansion in Philadelphia. Born into a family of sportsmen, she rebelled and entered the world of show business. Grace enjoyed a very successful career in films, but after her marriage to Prince Rainier, she was banned from acting and had to leave the profession that she loved. So will Grace's spirit return to Philadelphia, where her love of acting began, or will she be stuck in a place where her talents were suppressed far away from the limelight? Grace Kelly was born in 1929 a year which saw the arrival of three remarkable princesses, Jackie Onassis, Audrey Hepburn, and of course, Grace. Long before she took to the throne in Monaco, Grace Kelly was just an ordinary girl growing up in Philadelphia. When you read about Grace, you often read that she came from the main line, which is the rich, rich section of Philadelphia. You read that she was a society girl, but she wasn't. Grace was the third of four children in a working-class Irish family, where in the beginning, high society and rising in social class was pure fantasy. I think she was someone who came from a family that had uh, been discriminated against socially, and I think she had this spine that said, I will show them, and she was the commoner who became a princess, who willed herself into princesshood. And that's, um, that's Cinderella. The story began for Grace in a family of sports stars. Her mother was an Olympic swimmer and her father and brother were both Olympic gold medal scholars. But this was not a future that the young Grace wanted for herself. Um, Grace was different from all the other children. She Lack of interest left the young Grace isolated and shut out. Her father thought she was like the rat and never gave her very much attention. And Grace always wanted her father's attention, and her sisters and her brother had it, and Grace never did. It was Grace's uncle George who she then gravitated towards. He was the influence that would help to shape Grace's future and give her the comfort and attention that this young girl so craved. And he would talk to her about Broadway. And it was like in her head was Broadway rhythm, you've got me, everybody dance, so she would see herself not in musicals but she would see herself on broadway being treated with great respect being an actress she found that even as a young child she found that she could escape into another part it was so easy for her to slip into fantasy the next chapter in the fairy tale of this princess would see her leave philadelphia to seek fame and fortune amongst the lights of broadway and the hills of hollywood Grace uh, went to the Cannes Film Festival in 1956. Um, she was introduced to Prince Rainier. Her meeting with Rainier was love at first sight. They were married 
within a year. The story of this princess starts in the suburbs where she grew up. Prince Rainier may have banned her from acting and so halted her dreams, but I felt that our research should start where Grace's first true love really began. Now this place is called the Old Academy and it was built in 1819 originally as a schoolhouse but then in the 20s it changed to a theatre. And this is the first place that Grace Kelly performed. This is what got her interested in acting. A few of her family came here as well. Okay, so this is probably the best place to go for her influence. Because we all know that she sort of married and went to live in Monaco and she died in Monaco. Would her spirit come back to somewhere like this or are we barking up the wrong tree? We have to go to a place that she actually grew up because we have to get an idea of what she was all about. So there is a chance that she could come back here. She doesn't have to be haunting the place where she died. Oh, it's definitely possible. Okay. The Old Academy Players is testament to an era of theatre in the 20s, and it still retains all of its original charms. This is uh, one of the oldest little theatres actually in the country that's still in existence, because the little theatre movement really started in the 20s. Right now we're up to our 437th full-length production. This quaint venue is where the young Grace made her first steps into a world that would later become her life. She was about 12 by the time she got her first part, which was in a play called The Women. During that time, um, she was, uh, from what I understand, a rather shy girl. We cast her in five shows. She was in one called Wallflower, and she was in one called Starbound, which was rather prophetic in her, in her career. During this theater's long history, its performers and members have been experiencing strange phenomenon. Sometimes we'll have makeup on the makeup table and we'll come downstairs. Academy um, Playhouse. I had arranged for us to meet up with Bob Freed, the president of the Old Academy Players, to find out more about the venue and more importantly about Grace Kelly. So this is the actual theatre where Grace Kelly first performed? That's right. The first time she was ever on a stage was on this stage. But her family had been always interested in the theatre and she did her first play when she was about 12, a small part in The, in the Women. Do you know if she, um, she sort of left an impression? Did anyone ever think she'd go as far as she did in the acting world? From what I understand, she was rather shy. And she said to one of our members one time, what do you have to do to get a part around here? Would you mind showing us around the rest of the theater? No, I'd be delighted. Thank you very much. So what's this area, Bob? Uh, this is our meeting room, pretty much, and it's where we are also have the people come between the acts of the play. And if you'll see along the wall, picture from every play that we've done since 1961. And are you picking anything up in here, Chris? Yeah, the air is definitely different than when we were downstairs. What are you That's feeling? That's what I'm trying to feel. What I'm feeling is a woman, older woman, kind of like chewing, you know, moving the jaw, chewing, but kind of like very... Slow, very slow. Like, has anybody ever said about uh, seeing a ghost or feeling an old woman up here, the old woman that... Uh, seeing a ghost or feeling an old woman up here, the old woman that resides up here? No, not that I've ever heard of, no. Why am I picking this up? Very luxurious, Bob. Yeah, aren't they, though? Yeah. These uh, tables have probably been here since uh, Grace was here herself because they've been here as long as I remember and they were look pretty old at that time. Are you picking anything up in here, Chris? Yeah, I am feeling something now. I wasn't when we first walked in here, but uh, I'm recognizing it's probably the same thing that I felt in there. Would a venue of such historical and biographical importance to Grace actually get us the woman herself? Or could the feelings that Chris was starting to pick up give us another presence entirely? As the darkness closed in, we were joined by Bob Freed and we began our search. Bob, how many years has this stage been here? Since 1932. 1932. Now, is there any stories about anything ever happening here by the stage? some funny stories but uh, nothing um, unexplained or? No, no, not that, honestly not that I remember now is this the original stage that uh, Grace Kelly was in yes are you picking anything up here Chris I am a little bit and I'm trying to figure out what it is because 
I'm trying to see if I pick up any place memory on Grace. So I wonder if she came back, you know, if she did decide to come back, what would her message be? With Chris feeling nothing more than the stage's atmosphere, he decided to try and push the spirits to give us more evidence. Is there any way that you can make contact with us and acknowledge your presence, such as by a sound, such as by affecting the temperature in the room? Can you please make contact with us so that we know you are here? Okay, I'm not feeling anything, Gail. Doesn't mean I'm not getting anything. I'll have to play this back, but I'm not feeling anything. Should we proceed upstairs? Sure. Just be careful. It's dark. We left the intimacy of the stage and headed for the staircase, which would lead us into the dressing rooms at the top of the theater. Do you still get the same feeling you were having earlier on that someone was in here? No. Nope. Definitely a different impression for me. What is it now? It's calmer. It's not that same pressure that I felt. We headed out from behind the dressing room curtain. It was here that Chris had felt the strong feelings of a female presence. Could it be Grace Kelly? The ghost that I felt here, did you die here? Did you die in this building? Die here. As Chris called out for the theater spirit, he holding the spirit of Grace. Would the place where her career as an actress began give us the proof of the princess that we had come for? What I was feeling downstairs before, I'm feeling but twice as much. Or would we find that the beautiful Miss Kelly had already moved on? Chris wanted to call out to the spirits within this building. And with the company of the theater's president, Bob Freed, we reconvened in the darkness to see if any presence would choose to join us. So why do you have to light a candle, Chris? Well, the one thing that's believed about candles, specifically white candles, because white, of course, represents purity. It also represents going back to the light. You know, what they say is when your spirits and your souls die, there's a light that appears for you, and you go into that light to the other side, to the spiritual realm. So what happens for spirits that are earthbound is they're curious about this white light. So what you're hoping is that it's going to attract them. Can the spirit join us that I felt earlier today? Would you be so kind to come forward and stand by us and tell us who you are? Were you here at all when Grace Kelly was here? The actress, the princess. It soon became clear that our gathering around the table was not giving us any proof of anything other than atmosphere. I decided.
two, and it's not active. We left the old academy players in the darkness, with a sense of the young Grace Kelly's formative years, but nothing more. The next morning, Chris and I met to discuss the night's events further, and the first chapter in our search for the princess. I kind of liked last night, even though it wasn't very active. It was interesting for me to actually walk around that stage, you know, some of the information Bob was telling us about Grace Kelly, because it helped me identify what she was like as a child and where she was headed with her career. Is it place memory or is it actual pres an actual presence that's there? Both. When I first went up there, you know, I felt that there was definitely a presence there. But for being an a, a place that's active, you know, I don't think it was very active at all. The next step in our investigation into the spirits of Grace Kelly would see us leave the skyscrapers of Philadelphia and head for the coast. The Kellys, in their heyday, as successful athletes, were soon able to afford the trappings associated with high society. Holidays were commonplace, and for the affluent Kellys, a second home was soon on the horizon. On the Pennsylvanian coastline against the breaking waves of the Atlantic is the town of Ocean City. A place not dissimilar to the principality where Princess Grace would later call her home. Grace, who always summered in Ocean City by the sea and the boats, ended up going to Monaco around the sea and the boats. She gravitated to some place that was, in some of its features, very much like the Philadelphia and New Jersey she grew up in. This was a resort of major importance to not just the Kellys, but also the holidaying Philadelphians of the 20s. Set back from the boardwalk and the windswept promenade stands the Flanders Hotel. This was where the Kellys spent many of their summers. Grace Kelly and her family did come here to the Flanders Hotel. Grace Kelly spent a lot of hours swimming um, in the Flanders pools. The Flanders has held on to the ambience of the 20s and 30s from when it was first built. The lobby is still the same. Um, we have the grand ballrooms upstairs. Over the years the Flanders has been in business, it has welcomed guests from around the globe, but some have been more welcome than others. Both employees and guests had felt a female presence in the corridors and sinister goings-on in the hotel's basements or catacombs. Current president of the Flanders, Judy Vahonsky, is only too familiar with these stories and those that revolve around the resident ghost of Emily and the basements. The catacombs are a mysterious place. Um, it's said to be haunted. Everybody kids around about it, but everybody's on the lookout. And some housekeepers have seen a trail of her dress around the corner. Now, Gail's told me that this place is haunted. Uh, can you tell me, have you had any experiences here? First couple weeks after I was here, I was sitting here at the desk, mm -hmm. and I thought that a um, bunch of balloons a little kid had went by because I could feel the breeze of it, mm -hmm. and got up and there was nothing at all. Anything else? Yeah, a, a couple of months ago, actually, I was in the back there, and I think one of our other resident ghosts was a little bit upset with me, and he tried to push me out of the way. Can we come around and have a look where that happened? Sure, it's right around here. That way. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. I was standing here talking to the um, housekeeper. Okay. And all of a sudden, I went like this because somebody pushed me as if they went by. Really? And I asked her if somebody pushed me, and she said, no. In the hotel were alarming, but this was just one story of the paranormal. Another involved the legend of a ghost by the name of Emily. Now, do you know anything about the history of Emily, the ghost that you call her? Well, nobody's really sure who she is. Um, these pictures are supposedly composites of what people thought she looked like. She has long red hair. We feel she was somebody that used to work here, that was engaged, and that her fiancé was killed overseas in World War I, and therefore Flanders Field. One version is she lost her wedding ring, just trying to find it. Another version is that she was supposed to be married here, and she's just wandering around trying to find his spirit too. And that's why she has a wedding dress on. Into the catacombs, a maze of rooms buried underneath this vast building. There's definitely some energy right when you walk into this room. 
I'm really curious as to what it is. Is there anybody down here besides us? Oh boy. My hairs are standing on end right now. There's some, I don't know if there's someone here or there's something I'm picking up. Oh boy, that's when you walk into there. Okay, right now, I'm getting a sense that someone does not like me in here, in this room. It's us. Hmm. Feel that? What is it? <laughs> Sorry, I just walked into a cord. I didn't see it. Oh, go. Careful. There's a lot of stuff around here, so be very careful. I'm not going to give up. So you give me a sign. I need a sign. Is there anybody down here? Nor was it getting us closer to Grace Kelly. So we split up and ventured into the main hotel to look for more clues into the spirit of the princess. Grace Kelly. Have you come back from? Spirits everywhere. I've always had this theory about mirrors with reflections and lights. And there's a lot of stories using glass or mirrors that you could see ghosts. So what I believe is that if you take pictures and light bounces off, the mirror, sometimes you can capture a spirit in there if the spirit's there moving at a certain vibration to where it can be captured. There's a lot of shadows. I don't like it. I'll take one more. Come on, show yourself. Manifest. I got something here. From within the stillness of the ballroom, it seemed that Chris had caught a haunting outline that needed further analysis. As he enhanced the image of the mirrored doorway, he was left with this unexplainable and disturbing image of a face. The Flanders Hotel had grown eerie in its emptiness, and our search for Princess Grace had so far proved to be unsuccessful. The main event of the evening had been our collective experience of unease in the hotel's catacombs and the image which Chris believed he captured of a woman's face. I was not convinced of this as proof of anything other than a trick of the light and wanted a definitive sign of paranormal activity. People believe that spirits can communicate through moving a glass, so Chris and I decided to see if this would be more successful for us. Is there somebody here in this building besides us? For yes, move towards Gail. For no, move towards me. Please speak to us, spirits. The woman I believe I saw on the photograph in the mirror, will you please come forward and speak to us? Please come forward and prove to Gail that you're here. Please move the glass, spirit. The energy Chris felt resided in the ballroom seemed to have gone, so we spawn, so we split up again to explore the hotel further. If we couldn't get Grace Kelly, then would the lady in white by the name of Emily come forward? I'm going to go and sit with um, Emily's picture because um, Diane says she haunts this place, so the glass didn't work. Hi, Emily. Are you here with us, Emily? Will you please come forward? We want to know that you're happy. Come forward. 
believe you. Give me a sign. Is there anybody up here? Come forward. I left Chris in the darkness of the ballroom to explore the fourth floor of the hotel. This was also an area that Emily had been sighted. Emily! Emily! The feeling of unease within the Flanders Hotel seemed to have come and gone, and I felt we had picked up nothing more than atmosphere. Nothing? No, I didn't feel anything. No. No, but the one thing I have to say is the second floor is the most active to me. I mean, I really felt a lot of energy there, and I, I think I even saw something, you know, at the corner that went by one of the doorways. But, uh, I mean, we're done. We've done as much as we can for tonight. For the venue whose stories promised so much, I felt disappointed that we had no strong connection with any of the hotel's spirit. What did you think about last night, though? I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel scared. You thought you saw a picture of Emily in the, or a woman in the mirrors? Yeah, I, I really do think I got a picture of her in uh, with my camera. I think it's difficult to um, to look at photographs of mirrors because there's so many reflections and lights and things to take into consideration. I mean, maybe if you you get it analysed and let me look at it again, but last night it was it just looked a bit blurry to me. But when I was upstairs on the second floor, man, I thought we were being watched. You got a lot of um, feelings about things, but I think I think. Princess Kelly is a very elusive lady. Our time in Ocean City had given us both a real sense of the Kelly playground. However, it had not given us the princess herself. Philadelphians claim Grace as their princess quite rightfully. She was a princess here before. She was a princess in Monaco. The Kelly family were all stars in their own right, and their achievements as athletes meant that they moved within the circles of high society. Grace and her brothers and sisters would often go to parties in the mansions that are dotted around Philadelphia. On the edge of the city, in the suburb of Levittown, is the Bolton Mansion, a place where Grace played as a child and the next step in our search for the princess. This place is called the Bolton Mansion, and it used to be owned by a very prominent family called the Morrises, and that was the same time that the Kelly family were um, in Philadelphia, so it's very likely that they moved to the same social circles, and it's very, very haunted. There's been loads of sightings. Sounds like my kind of place. Now a historical landmark, the Bolton Mansion has retained the interior of a majestic family home. It is a building with stories of another era, but also tales of the unexplained and paranormal that its caretaker remembers only too well. Our books would disappear, uh, TV guides would disappear, um, things would move. If I had a flower arrangement on a coffee table, if I came home it might be on the, the windowsill or we'd think there was somebody upstairs when we're sitting here watching TV and we'd go upstairs and there would be nobody there. I'd arranged for Chris and I to meet with Jim Snow, the Bolton Mansion's current president who held the keys to the history of this place. But could he unlock the stories to its tales of the paranormal? It's a beautiful building. Yes, it is. Now, I know that some parts of this building are over 300 years old. I guess the, uh, the very first part of the building that was built goes back to the late 1600s, around 1687 is the circa date. This building was built in various stages depending on their, their needs, the size of the family and the wealth of the family. Is there any type of paranormal activity or unexplained phenomena that you've heard stories about? Uh, yes, we have. And probably the most popular story that we have happened out in the hallway oh, really? of the mansion. Uh, is this the staircase right here you're talking about? Uh, this is the staircase, yes. This is where uh, Mary uh, hung herself. She uh, was either a maid or a member of the family, and she was in love with a soldier during the Civil War period of time, and she was not permitted to see him any longer. You know, since she hung herself here, does her ghost appear, or does anybody see her, or anything uh, happen? Young, young people passing by the building outside uh, have mentioned that they, they thought they saw a, a woman pass by the big window on the second floor. 
We've had uh, paranormal groups doing studies here for some time, and they always come away with findings. Would the Bolton Mansion give us the results that we were looking for? Would the last chapter in our search for Princess Grace give our investigation a happy ending? As the evening closed in and the darkness shrouded the mansion, we began our search in the basements of the building. Are there any spirits here that would like to make contact with us? We're trying to find out if anybody inhabits that again, if someone was just doing that. What happened to you? Well, I felt as if there was, I thought something was crawling on my shoulder. The Jesus. Where is it? Something just touched my head. Right at the top of my head. Oh, come here. Where is it? It, it? Everything is like waist high, Gil. There's definitely someone down here. Make a sound if you can hear me. Oh my God. Yep, okay. Okay. That? Okay, that's okay. That's the ghost. Relax, relax. This is awesome. This is awesome. The activity in the basement was building, and both Chris and I were starting to experience things. Chris felt that if we now left the room and set up a camera, we may get the spirits to manifest. With the camera in position, we ventured into the mansion's apartment, where other paranormal phenomena had been experienced. Hello? What was that? What was that? What was that? Maybe it was a doorbell. What was that? Um, is there a doorbell that goes off? There's there? nothing that... No one touched something. Here, step aside. don't know. We're having one thing after another here. The Bolton Mansion was giving us more activity than we could possibly have expected, and the night had been one of the spirits that Chris had felt. Our investigation into the Bolton Mansion was about to take another turn. With the company of some local ghost hunters, we would reconvene our search for Grace Kelly before gathering in the dark to make one final call for the princess. Our search for the spirit of Grace Kelly had taken us on a journey from her beginnings in a theater in East Falls to the place where the family holidayed in Ocean City, before settling here in the suburbs of Philadelphia, in a mansion where the young Grace played as a child. Our experiences so far had been incredible. Both Chris and I had been shocked by noises throughout the house. What was that? Kelly. Do you have any abilities or what is your expertise? Um. But actually, when I walk through a, a building or like we were just in a cemetery, I just stand real, real quiet, very quiet for a couple of minutes and get centered. Then I just feel drawn to certain areas. Okay. Lori, yeah. what about you? What are your abilities? Sometimes I get pictures, names of people that have been there. And I see things, like I could see a person standing somewhere, but no one else sees it. Oh, excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah. It can come in handy tonight. Yeah. And then, Marcy, what about you? I'll see energy whizzing by me, by my eyes, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I've even heard people talking to me. It, it depends really on the situation. With the assistance of the ghost hunters, we split up and went our separate ways. I led the way to the third floor, leaving Chris to return to the basement, where he had picked up these representations of spirits, and where we had both been startled. Can you come out and make contact with us? Don't be shy. We just want to recognize that you're here. Well, I don't know what you ladies want to do. If you want to um, stand around anywhere, if you, you feel drawn to somewhere. I, just saw I swear I just saw a face right over here. By the, where? By the banister. Well, where the banister would be, right here. Can you tell what the face was like, or was it just a fleeting glimpse? It's just a glimpse. I feel a lot over here, this corner. Can you come out and greet us? 
Don't be afraid. We're not here to harm you at all. There's definitely someone here because the feeling is so incredibly strong. I feel like they want us to know that they're there. There's somebody here who's really sad. It feels like, um, you know when you hold your, like you, you hold your throat and then you let go, or like you, you're upside down and mm -hmm. there's like a head, head rush? Yeah. But throbbing. That's how I feel when I come on this floor. Like my circulation is being cut off. The feelings that Laurie was starting to sense were alarming, especially in the place where the legend states that a woman called Neri had hung herself. But would Chris be sensing anything equally disturbing as he headed for the living quarters within the apartment? Okay, I think she's moving into the other room, though. I can kind of see the outline of it. Mm -hmm. She's straight in the doorway. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's okay. She's a little bit nervous, I think. Can you give us a sign that you hear us? The Bolton Mansion was certainly proving to be home to activity none of us could explain. But it had not yet given us the presence of Grace Kelly. Would a seance in the oldest part of this building encourage the princess forward? I now just begin to concentrate silently. And you can just begin to ask whomever is present in the house to come into the center of our circle while you're beginning to concentrate for a minute. It feels like there's something behind you, that, like something going on around you. Mm -hmm. I'm also getting pains in my head at this point. My face just feels very cool. Mm -hmm. Like there's something that's really cool right in front of me, just sort of cooling me off. Keep getting touched. I know, somebody keeps touching my wrist, the back of my hand, my ankle, my ears, <laughs> just top of my head. <laughs> keeps touching. Everybody's feeling it. I'm feeling a lot of pain in my head. It almost feels as though my head is being gripped. Grace Kelly died in a car accident. Yeah. Whenever you talk about the car, my head starts to hurt really bad. I don't want to talk about the car anymore. This is a, an image of a very lovely woman in front of me. What she's trying to get a message. She's be saying something about she wishes she could heal them. My family needs healing. The seance for the princess drew to a close within the surroundings of this most atmospheric and unsettling venue. But had the feelings and images that had emerged from the circle really been those of Grace Kelly? was the vision that I got is the the woman standing near that car that went over the embankment that I still can't get out of my head and I really feel as though I may have been looking at uh, the spirit of, of Grace Kelly on our final morning in Philadelphia Chris and I met up to reflect on our journey into the search for the spirit of the princess Grace Kelly the original Cinderella I felt nothing when it came to seance. I felt that it was a bit too um, too contrived. But I think that what we did on our own was great. Well, the seance was interesting because it was different than what we've done before. You know, it was kind of quiet. It was more subdued. But in coming close to Grace Kelly, you know, and getting her during the seance, I have to say I don't feel we did. So out of all the places we went to, which one did you like the best? 
I liked the Bolton Mansion. Why? Um, I just thought it was really interesting and there was lots of spooky things going on that we can't explain. <laughs> Flanders Hotel was good. Exactly. You liked That's the Flanders Hotel. About. We didn't get anything that was collective, where everybody experienced something. But I did get a picture that I believe has a face in it of a woman standing there. All right? And that goes along with the senses that I had walking down that corridor of mirrors and going in and out of those ballrooms where I totally felt that there was a presence there. So where do you think Grace is then, so if we didn't find her? Well, you know, the locations we went to, you know, there's a little bit of information there, but maybe in Monaco, you know? Maybe, maybe her spirit resides in Monaco, you know, being a princess and all, and that's where she died. It's a fantastic journey. We just need to go to Monaco now. <laughs>